Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to this amusing review of fads from the 1980s. A lot of the 1980s fads were related to fashion, such as hair, clothes, and makeup, which are profiled in this video. 10 fads from the 1980s that you may have fondly or not so fondly remembered, or maybe just mercifully forgotten them. Not to worry though, we're here to bring them back in all their neon emblazoned glory. If you weren't around in the 1980s, Get ready for some fun, bizarre, questionable, and cool fads that seemed like a good idea at the time. And now, on to the fads. Leg Warmers One day, long ago in the old-timey 80s, a creative someone getting dressed for an aerobics class with super cold ankles and no clean socks anywhere in sight decided to take matters into their own hands and create what we now know as Leg Warmers. Out came an old sweater and off came the sleeves to create these questionable exercise fashion accessories which the inventor called Lower Leg Sweater Sleeve Sock Tops. True story. Actually, that's not true at all. Leg warmers are like high top socks without fabric in the foot area. They were originally worn by dancers to keep their muscles from contracting and cramping after stretching. In the 1980s, leg warmers caught on as a fashion fad partly due to the influence of the film's fame and flash dance, and the ubiquitous aerobics craze. They were worn with leggings, jeans, and tights, or as an aerobic wear accessory. Shoulder Pads An enormous fashion fad of the 80s were shoulder pads. These populated everything, from dresses to blazers to t-shirts. The idea was to look like an upside-down triangle, with earrings as big as dinner plates, and a wide belt cinched up so tight that you had to do all of your breathing before you dressed up for an evening out. And if you weren't a fan of having shoulder pads, you could just cut them out of your clothes and use them as padding for other purposes. Sometimes, the shoulder pads made a wearer's head appear too small. But not to worry, big hairstyles came to the rescue to... Big hair. Hair was where it was at in the 80s. Bigger, taller, and more tornado -ier. We may never have another era like it. Hair identified who you were and what you were all about in the 80s. Once you committed to a mullet or a new wave do or some other style, you were also letting others know what faction of 80 culture trends you identified with. Big hair, punk hair, new wave hair, mullet hair, crimped hair, these kept hairstylists in the green, and the Aquanet factory churning out ozone-depleting aerosol hair glue at full tilt for almost the entire 80s. Some of these hairstyles prevented people from riding in cars lest their dues get must, or dancing too close to fellow humans should they take an eye out with their pointy, pointy hair. These gravity-defying hair nests went the way of the dinosaurs, but for one glorious decade, 1980s hairstyles drew attention to the heads they adorned like a glitter bomb going off at a funeral. Sony Walkman The Sony Walkman was the iPod of its time. It was introduced at the dawn of the 1980s, caught on like wildfire, and was soon a must-have gadget for the masses to enjoy music, tune out friends and family, and pioneer the awkward headphones look. Users loved the portability and privacy offered by the device, and the cassette media made it possible to finally listen to music on the go in a way that wasn't possible with vinyl albums. Cassette sales soared throughout the 80s and outsold vinyl records in 1983, all thanks to the Walkman. Soon though, consumers would have to replace their record and cassette collections again when CDs were thrust into the marketplace. Sony's success with the Walkman inspired many other companies to offer their own competing devices based on the Walkman design. Not that it matters anymore. The technology had its day and evolved, eventually, into the multi-purpose, multi-gigabyte smartphones that mostly everyone has in their hand at this very moment. Boombox Get 10 D-sized batteries, stuff them into your biggest is best boombox, crank up LL Cool J, Run DMC, or Judas Priest if you were into metal, and take that bad boy for a stroll to rock a beat down your street. The boombox was a most impractical way of mobilizing your music, but did let everyone know you had attitude and didn't care who you annoyed or what anyone thought of you. 
The mid and late 80s were the height of popularity for boombox culture, with 20 and a half million units sold in 1986. By 2003, only 329,000 units were sold. As with much of the tech from the 80s, the smartphone, digital audio, and Bluetooth connected speakers took the place of the boombox. The boombox was required gear for that other 1980s urban fad, breakdancing. The boombox and breakdancing fads went together like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Sewers in the 1980s. Portable music that was paired with an impromptu dance performance that required only a cardboard dance floor and some very athletic, talented, and flexible performers. Yes, it was a fad that came and went in the 80s, but for some, it became a subculture that defined their lives for a few short years. It was a way for b-girls and b-boys to show off their dance moves by defying gravity and the limitations of human bendability. It seems to have started in the Bronx in the late 1970s and soon found its way into every corner of the planet from Japan to Rome and created some superstars of the breakdance world along the way. Soon there were grannies, ninjas, babies, and even dogs that were busting a move at the mall or on some random street corner. As with most fads that reach critical mass appeal, it soon died down and pop culture moved on to something else. Rubik's Cube This 1980s version of a modern day puzzle app took the world by storm and became insanely popular. The Rubik's Cube was accessible, portable, affordable, and a maddening challenge for those who tried to master it. Those who could solve the Rubik's Cube felt a smug sense of superiority over their lesser puzzle-cracking brethren and sistren who couldn't solve its elusive wrist-articulating quandary. Of course, if you couldn't figure it out, you could just peel the stickers off and reapply them where they needed to go. Or, you could just chuck the whole load of nonsense into the rubbish and never speak of it again. Here's some fun facts about the cube. There are 43 quintillion positioning possibility combinations to solve the cube. The world's record for solving the cube is 3.47 seconds. Rubik's Revenge, a later and more challenging version of the cube, had four rows of four squares instead of three on the standard cube. 100 million cubes have been sold since they emerged on the market. The Rubik's Cube is still around today and qualifies more as a beloved classic puzzle amusement rather than a take the world by storm fad. Acid Wash Jeans when you think of jeans from the 80s, the most likely image that appears in your mind are acid wash jeans. You are forgiven if you thought those were the only jeans that were allowed to be worn as decreed by the king of the 1980s, Bon Jovi. The jeans were popular in the mid to late 80s and were perfect to pair with your oversized sweater or matching acid wash jean jacket to effectively create a denim tuxedo. Acid wash jeans were created by taking regular jean material and placing them in a washing machine with pumice stones and chlorine. You could get acid wash skirts, shirts, pants, jackets, coats, and probably drapes to go with your Oakley wearing, mullet rocking, white high top sneaker 1980s lifestyle. Acid wash jeans went away in the 90s and then reappeared again briefly in the late 2000s for one last denim blast assault to your eyeballs and all that's tasteful and holy. Pac-Man Most everyone knows what Pac-Man is. It was created and unleashed on the world in the early 1980s and is still around today in various forums and incarnations. Back then you could find this video game in arcades, malls and bowling alleys and pretty much everywhere else. The video game spawned all sorts of pop culture spin-off products including breakfast cereal, toys, board games, a cartoon, and even a hit song. Pac-Man was everywhere in the 80s. Were you crazy about Pac-Man? You must have had the Pac-Man fever. The game was so popular and successful that by the 90s, Namco, its creator, revealed that it had made two and a half billion dollars from quarters alone. That's 10 billion quarters. It would take three and a half Olympic sized swimming pools to hold 10 billion quarters. MTV. 1981 presented the masses with the dawn of a new age in television and media consumption with these words. Ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll. 
That was the phrase that launched the cultural tsunami that was MTV and seemed to be everywhere in the 1980s. Music videos of camera-friendly bands were broadcast over this new cable network's USA-wide footprint. MTV had enormous influence on the music industry and significant cultural influence on young people and told them what music to listen to, what fashions to adopt, and what makeup and hairstyles to wear and what to consume. Think of it as the original mass-scale media influencing source. It made music bands wildly popular just by playing their videos and exposing them to wide audiences. Of course, if a band weren't TV appearance suitable, they probably weren't played on MTV very much. Face for radio, as they say. The very first music video to be broadcast on MTV occurred on August 1st, 1981 at 12.01 a.m. Do you remember what it was? Indeed, MTV did kill the radio star. It was great to revisit these 10 fads and crazes from the 80s and poke a little fun at them in the process. I hope you liked the video and thank you for watching. Please subscribe by clicking on the button below. I really do appreciate your support.